Well, what's appropriate punishment for suggesting via video that a colleague should be killed and that your boss might be next? This week, the U.S. House of Representatives said censure was the right reprimand for Republican Congressman Paul Gosar of Arizona, a move that hasn't been made for a sitting House member in more than 10 years. His video created intense debate across the country as well as in the halls of Congress, resulting in that censure vote that fell mostly along party lines Tuesday. Here with me live to discuss the vote, and what the posting of any of this in the first place has to say about the state of discourse and dissent in our democracy. Our Republican strategist, Karen Roseberry, and Democratic analyst, Hillary McLean. Ladies, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, for anybody who hasn't heard about this video, let's remind everybody this was a doctored anime clip with footage from Attack of Titan in which a Representative Gosar character kills a character with Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's head on it with a sword and then swings that blade at a character representing President Biden, has his face pasted on it. Let's just start right there. If you're in politics, you should be passionate about your convictions, even passionately wanting to nix an idea that's on the table. But focusing on the people like this? Karen, what do you think? I think that the video was in, in poor taste. I, I think that it actually moved the narrative of what was trying to be discussed so far away from those topics. And, and I think that that actually does a disservice to what the, the alleged intent was. Uh, I, I think uh, I think GOP leader McCarthy uh, set the right tone in, in first asking you know it to be taken down. Um, I, I think to, you know, sort of self-censor, self-critique, and even allowing this to go to the House Ethics Committee um, certainly could have been, you know, all appropriate courses of action. And, and I think McCarthy wants to get this back to issues, and, and we definitely saw that uh, with him speaking for hours um, about, you know, what's in these bills and, and why there is such objection, um, and making it more substantive rather than personal. All righty, Hillary, we want to remind everybody also before you answer that we're just showing a small clip of that video, not the parts that include the swinging of the sword. So, Hillary, what, what do you think on this? Well, I think the fact that a member of the House of Representatives would show and tweet a video um, like this really is evidence of the corrosion of norms, so, uh, social norms and um, norms of civility that um, unfortunately were so prevalent in the Trump administration and are now so evident in the House of Representatives. Um, it, it's also sad that not only this one individual member of Congress um, take this step, um, but he was surrounded uh, with support from his colleagues in the House, including the Speaker, um, when the censure was handed down, and that immediately after the censure, he reposted the video. So it's just, um, it, it goes so far beyond what uh, should be expected of really any civil workplace and, of course, uh, uh, you know, amongst our elected officials. I mean, imagine how any of us would feel if our own colleague posted a video depicting violence mm -hmm. against us by that colleague. I was, I was going to ask about the retweeting of that video because obviously the censure of that whole process didn't seem to have any effect. This hour back on November 8th, Congressman Garamendi told me he thought this kind of video from Gosar, this kind of behavior was inexcusable. That same day when I asked Congressman McClintock about the posting, he declined comment because he hadn't seen it, but has now sent me this statement after the censure vote, quote, uh, this week we learned that the inflation rate has hit a 30-year high and that last month's illegal border crossings have exploded. How did the Democrats respond? They spent a full day of debate over a silly cartoon posted on Twitter and included a brief juvenile clip of good guys fighting bad guys. It was pointless and stupid, but hardly the incitement to violence that the apoplectic Democrats claimed. The motion to censure Gosar and strip him of his committee assignments was the congressional equivalent of jumping the shark. It proved the majority Democrats are completely untethered from reality. We don't have that much time left, but Karen, your reaction to McClintock's take. I think it's important that he wants to bring it back to, again, those substantive issues. I, I think that we need to take um, as much of the, the, the personal attacks and emotion um, out of these discussions and bring it back um, to those, those issues. Um, and I think McClintock's statement uh, worked, you know, to do so. I think, uh, generally speaking, um, Republicans and Democrats alike, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one of the Republicans, need to look at what should be done, not necessarily what just can be done and, and what's allowable, but what do we really want to do to actually move the ball, move the conversation, move the narrative forward 
rather than handing over speaking point opportunities to, to you know, our, our opponents across the aisle that, that gives them, you know, oxygen and allows them to take the narrative in directions that we would prefer it not to go. Um, you know, anytime we hand a mic um, to AOC, um, we're moving the conversation away from our talking points and, and those things that we're trying to accomplish for the American people. And so I think uh, McClintock is trying to realign it and get it back on, on those issues that really are affecting all of us, you know, uh, immigration policy, mm -hmm. inflation, um, and, and those matters. Hillary, so silly cartoon, and is this just a realignment? Well, it was absolutely important for the House to take a stand and uh, express opposition to this type of behavior amongst members in the House uh, depicting violence against a colleague. But um, the Democrats are not simply focused on this censure. They have passed the infrastructure bill. They're very deeply focused on um, in policies important to the American people. And they're very much in evidence, uh, providing evidence that they are working to move the ball forward and make the American people's lives better. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, they are forced to spend time mm -hmm. On uh, dealing with things like this, um, you know, certainly not because they want to, but because they have to. Um, and just one other issue. What does this say about where we are in our political discourse and what voters may want to hear out of Washington? During debate on this censure, Republican Representative Lauren Boebert called one of her Muslim Democratic colleagues a member of the, quote, Jihad Squad. She's also been seen with President Trump sporting a Let's Go Brandon dress. Let's Go Brandon has become a conservative code phrase for expletive Joe Biden. Hillary? Yeah, well, the, the divisions in our country that, that are truly heartbreaking, I feel like are magnified tenfold in the House of Representatives. And um, again, it's a it's a corrosion and a decay of civility that is, um, it's harmful. It's harmful to the future of the United States of America. And it makes me very sad. And I, I do hope that there is a way, you know, with our, um, that we can get back to civil discourse, um, even if we have opposing points of view about how we approach policymaking, but that we do policymaking with um, uh, best intentions, with civility, mm -hmm. with um, the best, uh, you know, behavior that we want to model for uh, the young people in this country. And then Karen? Is so pointless. Karen, right. uh, we need a, a quick, quick word on this, but you get the last word on this. Where are we with our political discourse when you see things like that with the Let's Go Brandon dress? Absolutely. I, I think it just shows where, how far we've gone. I think that, you know, we do need to kind of look at the, the, the source of these and, and even beginning, even with like Hillary Clinton calling, you know, Republicans her enemies. And, and I think that that's, you know, just this escalation that we've seen for far too long and it does need to stop. And, and I think that I hope, uh, I think and hope that McCarthy's taking the right tone and bringing it back to issues and getting the, the, the personal attacks out of this. And hopefully we'll see that moving forward. All right, ladies, we've got to put a pin in it. There's so much to say about this topic. We hope to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.